Howdy, Derek here with Towering Trio, and I wanted to do just a more technical video this time around on the RV furnace and um, the sail switch. What this video is about is how to bypass your sail switch and why you might need to do this when you're on the road. So it's a, I think it's a great little trick that I just kind of figured out on my own. Um, because I've worked on furnaces at, on, at my house and had issues with that before and actually had to do this to do some troubleshooting. So I thought about it one night and I said, you know what, let's try this and see if it works and see how well it works. If you saw that other video that Stephanie and I did um, on our RV furnace, it turned out that this right here, our sail switch, was the culprit. And there was actually some debris stuck in here, um, some fuzz, dog hair, lint, whatever it was, there was a ball. And I think that was preventing it from closing completely because what happens is there's two wires connected here um, that are coming out of the control board on your furnace. And when the fan mower blows, it blows air um, against this sail switch like this and it closes this connection. You'll actually hear a little click if I put this in front of the camera. When this closes, you should hear a click. And what that's doing is completing the circuit and closing this connection here. So um, that was not happening in the last video. So it worked, we cleaned it out and it worked for a couple more days and then it stopped working again. And we actually hit some snow in Flagstaff and um, I had to do something about this. Stephanie does not like the cold and so therefore I had to fix the furnace for the second time. And if you watch that last video, uh, Stephanie actually points out there's a light that flashes during the sequence or right after that 30 seconds of the motor blowing but not moving on. It will actually blow for 30 seconds and then shut down. So that's one of the symptoms you want to look out for. If you're fan mower or your furnace just shuts down after 30 seconds of it turning on. That is, there's probably a single flash from the control board and that is saying there is a faulty sail switch. I actually looked up that error code because I thought about it, that it was a little strange uh, why it would actually be blinking and most furnaces have a control board nowadays, all current models, they'll have a computer basically and the computer is pretty smart. So the house furnace, I thought about it and it has a similar um, coating depending on the model and the company who makes it. So in this case, it's a Dometic. Um, I think it's gonna be very much the same for an Atwood because Dometic, um, they were using a Dometic thermostat with an Atwood furnace. And now I think maybe um, this model we have here is a Dometic, but a lot of the parts are still the same. It's probably still made by Atwood. They just brand it Dometic. Anyways, um, what you wanna do is pull out your sail switch and um, basically you need a set of jumper cables. And I have a set of jumper cables down here. Here they are. And they're actually wired in to the two wires that go to the tabs on this, these two tabs. So basically these two wires are connected where the wires come out of the control board that would connect to these two tabs. These are now the tabs. So there's no sail switch in between. So there's two ways to test your sail switch at this point. Um, one, you could take these um, jumper cables and hook one up to each one of those tabs. And now you can manually actu actuate this switch and close it. And if you do that and your furnace then moves into the next sequence, you should hear a click and that's the igniter. It lights the propane. The propane, then you can hear it blowing into your furnace and then you should get hot air a few seconds later or warm air depending on how your thermos is set. So that's how I determined that um, it was the sail switch, like confidently determined that I had an issue because it was not closing. So I just thought about it, I'm like, well, I, I can't put all this together inside, I have to have this out. So that's why I came up with these jumper cables. And then the sail switch stopped, it stopped working. So that didn't work for me. So what I said, you know what? It's just the switch. Well, all I gotta do is connect the circuit. So right here, connecting the circuit. That's the exact same thing as 
closing this switch. Or the fan mower blowing air against the sail, hence a sail switch, and closing this switch, completing the circuit. So that's, that's essentially how it works. Um, again, if you have any questions about this, just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. But it's a really, really simple process. So what I, I want to do is show you that this works. You might be a little bit skeptical. In theory, it should work. But what I'm going to do is show you. Um, so, um, I'll go ahead and jump across the camera here and turn on the furnace. You'll hear the fan mower kick in and then it's going to run for 30 seconds. If I don't close the sail switch or touch these two jumper cables together, then it won't, it'll just shut off after 30 seconds. That's, that's what happens every time and it does this for two or three times and then it does, goes in the lockout mode for protection. So, you know, burn down your coach or something if there's an issue with gas or whatever. So let me turn this on real quick and you'll hear it blow. So there you go, the furnace is on. It's blowing air, so if I touch this within 30 seconds, you'll hear a click here shortly and then you should hear the furnace, furnace turn on. It'll turn on, trust me right there so a click it ignited and now i can put my hand down here and it's blowing hot air if i disconnect these two that is opening the connection or basically turning the switch off because i want you want it on for it to stay connected so it's blowing hot air down here it's getting warm if i turn this off it'll read like a fault code that the switch is not closed so therefore it'll shut down and stop blowing hot air and then eventually it'll exhaust all the the air that was in the chamber out the out the side of the coach and then it'll shut down and go into lockout mode and you'll have to turn off your thermostat flip it back on and then it'll try again so you want to leave this connected and that's bypassing the switch that's taking the switch out of the circuit and doing it manually so you have to leave these connected you leave this con connected for the whole cycle you'll hear your furnace your thermostat click and turn off, then you can disconnect this switch. And then when you hear it kick on again, when your temperature drops down below the threshold, then you'll have to manually come over and touch these two to get it to go into the next sequence, which is the lighting sequence. So from here, showing you that this works, basically I'm going to cause an error code and it will shut down and stop blowing hot air in um, a few 10 seconds or so, it'll realize that it's open. The con control board will then shut down the furnace. So there's a couple ways. Let me um, go ahead and turn off the furnace so it's not making too much noise. So it's gonna blow some hot air, um, but there's a couple ways. You can use your alligator clips to clip onto your sail switch and then manually close it with your finger or let gravity do it because it's pretty, you know, pretty light actuation there. Or you, if you have a voltmeter with you, which is a better way of doing it because um, connect one here and one here, but this requires getting, of course you got to take it apart either way, but this is the better way of doing it. So I'll turn on my voltmeter to continuity and that's the ohm symbol it kind of looks like a horseshoe if I show you that and then I have both of these here so if you look at the screen I'm going to close the 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 switch and make the connection so it says L O L and if I close this it should read and then say one if it says one or zero that means the switch is closed there we go, point one, zero, it, there it is. So if you watch it, we'll do it one more time. One, zero. So that means this the switch is closed. There is continuity that the switch is working. And there you go, it just shut down because there is no switch. Uh, so that was the safety mechanism. So the switch is, theoretically, it's good. Um, according to the voltmeter. So what you want to do is check 
to see on the tabs if there's any corrosion here, if it smells like burnt electronics. If you've ever smelled fried something electronics wise, you'll know what I'm talking about. If it doesn't smell and it just smells like plastic or something, that's a good sign um, that it's not burnt. And if there's no click, of course, it, there's probably something wrong on the inside. So um, I'm going to take this furnace apart. Um, there's a couple screws. I'll show you how to take it apart real quick. And then we will, um, I'll show you how I hooked up my alligator clips on the inside to manually bypass this switch. And that's what this video is about. So then we'll just go ahead and put my new switch new switch back in and see if that fixes the problem. If not, there's something um, with the control board maybe uh, that's not allowing it, but when you manually bypass it, it seems to work just fine. So before that, then you work backwards to the switch. If And then before that is, is the fan actually blowing against this and closing the switch? because that would probably be the only thing that's not happening if this switch is good. So maybe you have debris in your fan motor or it's not speeding up and blowing enough RPMs to create enough draft. But like if I just blow on this with my breath, it'll close the switch. You can see that it closes it. It doesn't take much to close this. If you have a really stiff switch, maybe there's something there, but it's, it seems to me that switch is pretty good. So let's go ahead and move on down into the furnace and dig a little bit deeper and I'll show you um, how I hooked up these wires. It'll make a whole lot more sense um, of the sequence, but otherwise, um, very simple process. So hang tight. Okay, so we're back here um, and I'm gonna show you how to remove your furnace to access the control board and where the sail switch um, needs to be installed and I'll show you how I connected my two jumper cables to bypass the sail switch this again I say bypass and that means um, temporary solution to get you by until you can get the part that you need fixed so don't don't leave it like this um, I don't want you burning down your coach saying that I said it was okay so that's my little disclaimer this is temporary and to get you by so your wife does not yell at you when it's cold in the camper because some unexpected weather rolls through. Uh, I only know this because that's what happened to me. So um, you'll need a couple tools, just a little adjustable wrench for your gas line. Make sure your gas is turned off before you do this because it's going to um, exhaust or leak out a little bit of um, residual gas in the line. So make sure that's turned off. Otherwise, you'll just be filling your coach with propane. You'll need a, for the two hose clamps down below, I'll show you in a second. You need a, what is this, a 5 16 um, hex and a Robertson um, R2 uh, bit, which is the square bit. And I really appreciate that they use square bits because our last Winnebago, they used just regular old Phillips. Um, again, this thing was 20 years old from 2001. They, the Robertsons don't strip out. So it'll take a Phillips, but you'll probably strip it and you'll get one shot. So make sure you carry some Robertsons if you got a newer coach or at least a newer Winnebago. They switched over and I really appreciate that. So that's good on Winnebago's part. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the camera down and show you the two screws, the gas line and the two vent um, fittings that you need to loosen and then you can lift this thing out of there. Okay, so first things first, let's just go ahead and get the gas line out of there. Just need a, a little adjustable wrench. It's kind of a tight fit. You should be able to just turn it, uh, um, loosen it up here. If you can see that and a little gas just came out. So there's your fitting. Um, there may or may not be a, 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 I had a little screw that I had previously taken out to support for this. Um, if I take this, and um, this is my Robertson bit with a little extension on it, and there's two screws. If you can get a, 
a drill driver down there, great. I could not, mine is way too tight. So I'm gonna undo both of these. And you should be able to do them by hand. Put the screws aside because you probably want to reuse them um, if you don't strip them out, otherwise you'll have to get new screws. So our 5 16 um, hex and it's just the simple hose clamp. I'll do this one. It really only needs one or two turns. They're just on there snug. So undo both of these and it pops out like that. This is a magnetic one sticks. So we'll go ahead and set these aside. Try not to rip these, they're very fragile. Otherwise you'll have to just replace these as well. And that's just more work having to go to the store or something or duct tape it, I don't know, something like that. Um, I had this just temporary zip tied over here. So we'll take these wires down so they don't get tangled. And now everything's disconnected. This thing should be loose and just you can wiggle it out of there and it just pulls straight back. Just be careful here, you only have about a couple inches of wiggle room um, the way that they put this in. So it barely, barely comes out of there. And then, forgive me, I'm just going to lift this out of here at an angle like so, and it just barely enough room. And since my wires are still connected, don't rip those out. I'm just gonna stand it on end, and then this way you can see what's going on. Go here and adjust the camera here. Okay, so now that we got our furnace out and you can see the business end of the furnace, if you look right here, this is how I connected my cable um, to bypass the sail switch. So find my sail switch. That's this guy right here. Um, and there's two, two wires. So I just took the end of this plug this is a this is off my generator. This is what I had and it worked great. If you got some alligators that you carry around, which is probably a good idea, I'll probably start doing that because I had to come across this if I ever have to do it again. I might just do it this way because it worked so cleanly. But I just wedged these in there on the um, the little um, protective cover here so you don't short things out. Um, the insulating um, cap. So I can now go ahead and take that out um, and then we can reconnect our sail switch. So again, check. If you got a new switch, awesome, perfect. Plug it in, it should work just fine. Um, I do remember that the two wires were on top that were together and then this other wire was on the bottom. So you just wanna put it back the way. So if you take a picture if you forget and that way you don't have to worry about it. So there you go, have it. Um, and now you need, there's three screws here um, and a mounting plate. This is your mounting plate. So when you pull out your sail switch, um, you should see your mounting plate um, attached to it. So what's what needs to happen, it's gotta go in this configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and Figure out how this goes back in like this. So this one goes like that. And then this has got to go down actually like this. So when your air blows, it blows and presses against your switch like this. And it constantly blows against this and it's holding it closed. And that way it's making the connection between these 
wires here, and then it sends a signal back to your control board to move on to the sequence. So that's, that's how it goes back together. So this will go right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple screws in and then put this back in. And then um, get this sail switch um, installed and put our furnace back in basically the reverse order that I took it out. So that's how you bypass your sail switch and reinstall this to um, the way that it comes out. When you see it, just take notes, take some pictures. And if yours is a little different, this is how mine looks. Um, it should be a um, simple fix. This, this video is probably gonna be a 20, 25 minute video. I'm not going to edit very much. It's just I'm doing this, taking it apart, first shot go. So um, I kind of knew what was ahead of me because I had taken it apart already. So it might take you a little bit longer. Again, 30, maybe 40 minutes if, if it's your first time. But with some simple hand tools, you can fix your furnace. So if you like this video, please um, give me a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe to our channel. Follow us along our ventures. I, I know, again, I will say this is just a very technical video, but I think it's something that every RV um, owner should know how to do is fix a furnace. Um, simple repairs like this, it'll save you a trip to the dealer. And this sale switch, if you got to replace it, it's only a $20 part. I was going to, like I said in the other video, I was going to get it replaced under warranty. You know, it's, I, it's, it's part of slippage um, in the industry. You know, they give you this warranty, but... Simple stuff fails all the time, and who really has the time to take their RV down to the dealer, drop it off. If you've ever done that, it's going to take you probably weeks to get this $20 part fix that you can do in 30 minutes. Save yourself the time, frustration, learn some things about your coach, and um, you'll be better off. And you'll be able to fix this stuff on the road rather than trying to go to a service center in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, anyways... Again, please like, subscribe, um, leave a comment if you like this video, if you have any questions on how to do this, or um, if there's something I missed or wasn't clear in the video, please leave a comment. Um, but until next time, we'll see you on the next hike.